this is exactly what we are going to see in the next chapter. Exporting a project. Exporting the project means that we take everything you did on your timeline and we convert it to a video file so you can share it with anybody. Reach file, share and export file. Now remember that shortcut. It's common E for export. Actually mine is different because I changed it. If you want to know how, I made a video about that. It's not a Final Cut settings, it's a general Mac settings. I explain how to do it in the video number 6 in the description. Now let's see those export settings. So this is the window on which we're going to do the export of the video. The export is done in three phase. The first one is the info just right here. So on this page we're able to change the name of the file. We can do that a bit further, but that's somewhere we can do it. We can also change the description, the name of the creator and had some tags, but I think this is quite useless. The second part will be to go on the settings page. On this one, we are able to choose the format. As you can see, the last project that I did export, I only export the audio of it. You can choose between audio only, video only, or video and audio. The other one, just forget about it. Most of the time you will probably export video and audio, so I'm going to pick that one. And then we are able to choose the format. Actually, it's on Apple ProRes 422. All of those Apple ProRes are better format to export to another video editor because you will lose not much quality of, of video or anything. And you can go to H264 if you want to share it to pretty much anybody. I'm going to pick that one right now. But if you want to have more detail, like I said a bit previously in the video, you can take a look at the video number four in the description. You can see the difference in size of H264 that will make that video of one hour and five seconds and 19 frame a 31.16 gigabyte file. But if I go to Apple ProRes LT, for example, the lightest one, we go up to 182 gigabyte. And if I pick the heaviest one, we go up to 900 gigabytes. So let's go on H264. Then we can go to the next step, which is roles. And from here, you can see what you will export as a file. So you see, this is one huge file that will contain a single video track and a single audio track. That means that if we take a look at the timeline, you can see there is that layer of me speaking and that overhead, there is that keyboard and that overhead, there is four title and all of them will now be in a single track. This means that if you want to change something, a title or anything, you're stuck with it. The title is on the same layer than the rest. It's one video file. And it goes for the same thing for the audio track. As you can see here in blue, that's me speaking. In gray, that's the audio effect. And in green, that's my music background. And they will all be in a single track. This means that if someday you want to pick that project, you don't have the Final Cut file anymore, and you want to do a translation from English to French, for example, well, you can't just remove the English audio because it is fixed with the effect and the music. You will remove everything. So there's a solution for this if you want to keep the track separately, the audio track, you can go in multi-track quick time movie. And this will create one file with one video track, but as you can see, three separate audio track. So eventually you should be able to delete that audio track, the dialogue one, and replace it with a new narration by keeping all the effect and the music at the very same place. There's another option that I never tried. You can export as separate files. So that looks like to be five files, one for your titles, one for your video, and one for dialogue, all effect, and all music. There's something I should say about the multi-track QuickTime movie. If you try to export something like this to YouTube, doesn't like it, you will have no error message 
but you will only have the veto track and the first audio track. So in that example, I would lose all the effect and all the music. So what I do usually is that I export it as a regular QuickTime movie, just like that. And once that done, you go in settings, you export audio only, and in the role here, I will select audio only as separate files, just like that. So you pick the configuration you need, and after that, you hit next, and you choose where you want to save it. As you see, change the name. That's the name I gave to that project, but I can change it again. So like where you want to save it, hit save, and let your computer work for you. Then wait for your computer to process everything. And we're done. This process can be very long, even for a very powerful computer. It all depends on the length, the resolution, and the complexity of your project. Uh, by the way, by default, you should end up with a file with a .mov extension. If you want to share it with somebody on Windows, he might not be able to read it. If this happened, just tell him to rename the extension from .mov to .mp4 and it should be just fine. Now, if you want to push the exporting to the next level, I made a video about how to use Compressor, which is another software that is sold separately, but it's very linked to Final Cut. And it's the video number seven in the description. So there we are. If you are at your first step in video editing, I think it's already a lot for today. That video was only a chapter of a bigger video about video editing with Final Cut. And you can see it just right there. Hey, see you there. See ya.